start buying bad power supplies like this one. And the reason I want to make this episode is to show you guys that this is what happens if you cheap out on a power supplies. It goes kaboom. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode with me, Budget Gaming HD. In today's episode, we're going to discuss a few topics. Topics like efficiency of a power supply, reliability, safety factors, wattage, average usage of your PC when it comes to power supplies, what components uses what type of wattage, and the efficiency levels of each and every power supply. So if you're new to building PCs, well, you're in luck because we're going to discuss what you need for your next gaming rig. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of me, Budget Gaming HD. In today's episode, like I've mentioned, we will be discussing power supplies, the most crucial component in your PC, something you do not wish to skimp out on. So why is it bad to buy a bad power supply? Literally, it says it in the name, bad power supply. There's a few reasons. One would be reliability. These power supplies are not reliable at all. And like I've shown you guys, this supposedly 850 watt power supply went kaboom on a 450 watt system. Yes, you heard right. Almost half of the requirement and it didn't make it. Besides that, it went kaboom. You're also looking at a very low efficiency rate. So a lot of energy is converted into heat, which obviously costs you money in the long run. Yes, it uses more power, which pushes up your energy bill. So you might be saving 10 or 20 pounds on skimping out on a decent power supply, something that's half decent, but you will be paying extra money on your energy bill. The power stability of these components are really bad. They do not give efficient power to all of your components at the same time. You might find odd cases where you are lucky and they do, but most of the times they don't. And what ends up happening is your PC crashes and you might even end up damaging components like your graphics card, your motherboard, or your CPU, and even sometimes your RAM. And of course, the last point is safety. You might come home to your PC and your house is burned down because of something like that. So just keep that in mind. It is not the greatest of options, if any. Now, guys, I must admit, I am extremely guilty of buying cheap power supplies. And that's only for the fact that I am a professional at this. So take my word for it. When I buy these power supplies, I know what I'm getting myself into. I know the risks and I do end up blowing up them one by one by one. But luckily, this is in a controlled environment where I am in charge of the outcome. So guys, let me do the mistakes and you learn out of them. Let's get back to calculating what power supply you need. Scenario, you're new to building PCs. You are stressing because you don't know what power supply to buy. You've got everything under the belt. CPU, motherboard, RAM, SSDs, fans, everything. You have it on your list, but just not a power supply. So what power supply is right for you? Well, the answer is simple. Let's first start with your CPU. So for the CPU, go to your manufacturing website and look up the TDP value. Normally, this ranges between 70 to 160 watts and 200 for the really beefy boys. But for the purpose of this video, let's work on 150 watts. So keep that in mind, 150 watts for your CPU. The next category is graphics cards. Now, graphics cards may vary. So I'm using mine as an example. I've got a 3080 Ti that has a power draw of 350 watts. And the way you can get it is you can just type in 3080 Ti power draw, right? Power draw, 350 watts. Now you can look up the PS. PSU requirements and it would give you somewhat of a ballpark to work in but I like to be more exact so that says you need at least 750 watts of power which is not wrong but I like to calculate my own one and add another 20 percent just for safety factors so next up is your motherboard now motherboards usually draw between 20 to 60 watts depending if you have RGB how many capacities you've got and so on and so forth but look up your manufacturing website on the power requirements but for the purpose of this video let's work on the maximum of 60 watts we're already at 560 watt guys just keep that in mind 150 for the cpu 350 for the graphics card and 60 for the motherboard now ram sticks don't use a lot of power but i do not want to rule them out and normally they're between two and five watts a stick depending if you have rgb the speed that they run so on and so forth so let's work on the maximum which is five watts i've got four sticks so that's 20 watts the same with storage components, SSDs also between 3 and 5 watts. So again, I've got 4, so that's another 20. Now guys, my rig is insane. I've got too many fans in my PC and I've got about 10 fans, right? 10, who has 10 fans? Not even the freaking rocket that goes to the moon has got 10 fans, but my PC has. So let's just work on that. So, so each fan, and they're quite heavy on power, is between 10 and 15 watts. Again, it depends on the manufacturer. If you have RGB, if you've got PWM, so on and so forth. But let's work on the maximum of 15 watts a fan. 10 fans, that's 150 watts. So for my rig, I need 750 watts as a bare minimum to get around to power all of my components at 
baseline. That is where the peak power goes. Now, obviously, sometimes your components may require more. Like I've seen from my CPU, I've got a 3900X at 150 watt TDP, but I can see from hardware monitor, it goes sometimes to 180. So guys, do always add another 20% to your power supply requirements. So 20% of 750 is 150 watts. So you're looking at 900 watts recommended power supply. Now that's not far off. I'm sitting on a thousand watts of power supply. So I know even though if my system goes over and above, it will easily handle that. So guys, like I've mentioned, if you've calculated your entire power supply requirement, always add an additional 20% just to be safe. That's just a rule of thumb. Do not skip out on it. You won't regret it because even if you have to move on to another components in the near future, you know you've got that buffer to play on. So what does 80% plus mean? There's a lot of efficiency numbers out there, but this is just a ballpark. So 80% efficiency plus just means 80% on 20%, 50%, and 100% of the efficiency level. So that means 80% efficient of power delivery, 20% loss. So 20% is converted into heat, which obviously is a power loss to you, which costs you obviously money. So the higher the certificate of the rating of the power supply, the more efficient it is, the less money it would cost you at the end because less power is converted into heat. So there's a few variations in between. So the last one I want to talk about is an 80 plus gold. This one is generally 87% on 20%, 85% on 50%, and I think it's 87 on 100%. You might, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember all these figures. I'm just speaking out of, out of my head the way I remember it. There's a lot of other ones that you can buy. Always remember to Google, but the efficiency level, now that I've explained to it, probably makes a lot more sense. You're probably going, oh, it probably doesn't affect me in such a way that I was hoping it would, or maybe it does affect me and I need to buy a better power supply to keep my energy bill down, whatever. Just as a nutshell, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the highest power supply rating is a platinum, uh, platinum gold. I think it's 80% and it's 92% on a 100% efficiency. Now getting onto the connectors. A lot of you might think, oh gosh, what connectors do I need? What must I look for? I don't understand all of this terminology. Just take a deep breath. It's not as complicated as one seems. Your 24 pin ATX connector goes straight onto your motherboard. This is fairly universal in today's standard. In the olden times, you used to get a 20 pin as well, but the, 20 per, the 24 pin used to click just over it and there was no problems powering your system. Nowadays, you get your connector. Let me show you on this jank ass power supply. You get this and it can convert, but there's not really any more need for this because these motherboards are probably discontinued. And if they're not, they probably need to go into the bin unless you've got some proprietary motherboard from Dell or uh, OEMs from HP or something like that. But otherwise than that, this is how it looks. And this is your 24 pin. Boom. <laughs> so then you've got an eight pin CPU connector, not a PCI Express connector. And please, they're not backwards compatible. I know the connectors are a bit different, so you can't mess it up, but I've heard of people really forcing them in and then blowing up their motherboards. Computers are all about zip, means zero insertion force. So the lower spec motherboards normally uses one four pin and the higher spec motherboards uses two four pins. Now, if you have a power supply that has two four pins, you can just strip them apart. Like I've showed you on the 24 pin, it, it just slides from each other and just plug in your four pin and you're set to go. The next one is your two eight pins or three eight pins for your graphics card. It depends on the power supply that you've purchased, but general rule of thumb is they do come with an eight pin, one, two, three, or four. I've got six on my power supply. I do not know why, because I'm not gonna power three graphics cards. And even if I did a thousand watts, won't cut it. So if you're smart enough to buy a fully modular power supply, or you have the funds to allow this, you can remove the excess cables and they're not so much in your case. So for my 3080 Ti, it only uses two eight pins. You just slide them in and you're good to go. Again, zero insertion force. If they don't fit, it probably means you've got your CPU connectors in your hand. So then you get Molex connectors. You probably won't see that in today's life because everything has been converted to SATA for the most part of my knowledge anyway. If you still have a Molex hard drive or a SSD that you converted to Molex, you know, Molex to SATA, you probably need to upgrade soon. And then the final cable is a SATA cable. Now, SATA cables are fairly universal. They all look the same. They are a little L-shaped. You just squeeze them in and that's you to, good to go. As simple as that, guys. There's no rocket science to a power supply. You see all these cables, you get flustered, but they all have a purpose and they all have a place. 24 pin for motherboard, two four pins to power your CPU and your motherboard, SATA connectors to power your fans and SSDs and whatever peripherals you've got else in your, in your PC. Now let's head over to Amazon as they're a good local supplier to me for, to give you guys a good reference. Now, obviously to do more homework and to get the best power supply does take a bit of time. 
However, this is just a guideline to give you guys an idea of what to do. So let's search for a cheap power supply. Let's say cheap power supply. And please don't buy this stuff, guys. Um, computer. Can we search for that? No. Let's just say power supply 750 watt. And then we sort low to high. So here's one for 31.49. And to be honest, it's actually not that cheap. You can probably going to spend about 15 to 16 pounds more to get a core share one, maybe a 600, maybe a 550. But even the 550 core share would be better than the 750 black at 31 pounds, 50 pence. I wouldn't buy this, honestly. No. So this, the reason I'm showing you to this is even at 31 pounds, it seems like a lot, but it is just absolute jank. Now let's just search for a normal core share 750 watt power supply. Again, search low to high. And here you go, guys. Like I said, 42 pounds for a core share cv 550 cv 550 just means 550 watts it's a 80 plus it's a 80 plus bronze certified so you're looking at about 20 percent loss of energy converted into heat which is not bad the next one i want to talk about is called a what what is that company i think it's rampage power supplies i might be wrong look at this guys 50 pounds for an 800 watt freaking fantastic power supply this is also 80 plus bronze certified apparently it's 88 percent efficiency rated wow I, I can't measure this but if they say it, it probably must be true so you need to ask yourself what power supply is right for you again here's an 850 watt power supply from black for 41 pounds guys just spend the nine pounds more and just buy something proper so we're going short low to high oh gosh a switching power supply 500 watt for 26 pounds god this shouldn't even be legal to be sold like honestly let's see what do we have here what can we find there's a 700 watt for 45 pounds not bad yes it does seem that way so the best power supply that i can recommend for that would probably be the rampage 800 watt game max 800 watt rampage for 50 pounds so let's see here a 750 80 plus bronze is 70 pounds so it is quite a bit more expensive it's like 20 pounds more but even though you can even see between the 650 and the 750 price difference is not that much i would always opt to spend that extra 12 20 pounds more 12 to 20 pounds more and just buy the bigger power supply so you know you're not limited to anything other than what your budget can suit you for your next components so guys that's a wrap for this episode i hope i didn't bore you with too much information if you found value out of this episode, please remember to give me a like and a subscribe. It does help me to grow this channel in the near future. And obviously, it's motivating to see my audience grow. So guys, I shall see you in the next one.